so excited this week to give you some three actionable steps, super useful information on overcoming the three emotional roadblocks that stop you getting started. Now, one of the reasons I love this is because so often when we're looking at a new promotion, starting your side hustle, starting a new project, throwing it all in and completely changing your life, there's an overwhelming feeling quite naturally of not being ready. And it's easy to think that you need to not start. Maybe you think, oh, I need more information. I need to be sure, all of these things, but that not feeling ready is usually down to three emotional roadblocks, which I'm going to go through today. Now, the first one I call, what if it doesn't? Now, if you're listening to this podcast or you're watching it as part of my email list and getting it super early, you'll know that I've done another episode on this whole what if moment. But the first emotional roadblock is what if it doesn't work out? And what this does is it diverts your energy. Now, you might be saying, well, Ellie, you know, by thinking what if it doesn't work out, I'm actually being prudent. I'm assessing the risks, I'm thinking of the threats, I'm looking at the market, and it's actually quite sensible that I start with thinking, what if this doesn't work out? And I hear you, and yes, you always need to be prudent and careful and assess the risks in any business. However, starting with what if it doesn't work out means your energy is automatically diverted into the negative. Now, it's a scientific fact as well as emotionally sensible, that you can't be positive and negative at the same time. It's like saying, I want to go in a car, jump in a car and go forwards and backwards a little bit at the same time. You're either approaching a positive mindset, a positive mindset way or a negative mindset way. So a better way of doing this, and I have talked about this in more detail, so dive in if you need more on this point, but what if it does work out? What will I need? What if what I'm building becomes commercially viable? What if I can live a completely different life? What will that life or business look like? And then work backwards from there. Now, this is the essence of, of feeling forwards, which is a, an advanced version of beginning with the end in mind, um, like the fabulous Stephen Covey told us so many years ago. But okay, what if it works out, I'm going to be living a completely different lifestyle. Let's say you're looking to leave your office job and start a, let's do something different again, travel business. So you may need to visit a number of places to get confident about what you're recommending. You could have to change so many things about your life. So, okay, rather than, well, what if it doesn't work out? What if I, um, what if I really hate the job or what if, there's no travel industry, what if there's another pandemic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What if it does work out? Okay, my life is going to look like this. If it does work out, I'm going to not be binge watching Stranger Things, well, only in your spare time, but I might be making sure that I watch lots and lots of up-to-date movies, documentaries, streaming services on the particular area that I want to recommend in my travel business. So once you work out what if it does work out and what I'll be doing, then you can assess the risks. Then you can say, well, I'll be doing this or funding this or spending my time on this. How can I make sure that that's actually going to work? Rather than, because remember, worrying is praying for what we don't want, rather than, well, what if it doesn't work out? And then going down that negative path of, Firstly, you're basing your assessment of risks, threats, opportunities, strengths, weaknesses, all of that, you're basing it on it not working rather than it does. So that's the first emotional roadblock I want to chat about. Now, the second one is a biggie, and these aren't necessarily in the order that they might appear or appeal to you. But number two I'm going to talk about is what will fill in the blank think of it. So what will my family, my friends, my, um, my peer group, my, let's say you've made a, a great brand for yourself in another business and you want to pivot slightly or change your business completely, what will my customers think? What will they think if I introduce this radical new line of clothing, food, um, environmental products, you know, insert it all here. Now that's a really interesting one because 
On the one hand, you want the support of your family, your friends, your peers, your customers. But on the other hand, depending on how far you're moving away from your current life and your current lifestyle, it may be a little bit too much for them to handle in the really early stages. Plus, many entrepreneurs come from family situations where an entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial mindset, let alone an entrepreneurial lifestyle and business is not something that the family before have experienced. So although you want their love and support quite naturally, and it would be, it's always great to have that in the early stages before you've established that your project and started to work on the project and, and everyone can see that it's progressing, you're asking them to be supportive of something that they really don't know anything about. Now, you know your network way better than I do, and you know how well received your ideas may or may not be. But just some, just some information I'd like to share with you on supporting yourself in feeling confident in moving forward is to get a support group that has some kind of knowledge of what you are trying to achieve. So in the early days, and I, this is me when I have an idea for a new book, I'm so in love with the new idea, I'm so excited about it, I wanna talk about it all the time, but I've learned to pick my audience. LinkedIn is a absolutely fantastic place to firstly, you can research someone who might've done something similar to you, and then you can reach out to them. It's a very, very supportive community. Facebook may also work for you. If, if you spend a lot of time on Facebook, you can find groups that may have a similar bent to what you want to do or what you want to get into. And you can find some absolutely invaluable advice and support from people who come from a slightly more knowledgeable experience than perhaps your friends, family, peers, co-workers support group that you've been relying on before. And that gives you the courage to, when you do share it with friends and family, if what you're doing is, is way outside their comfort zone, when they ask you questions, because of course they're interested in what you're doing, and of course they really want to support you and they'll ask lots of questions. You can say, yeah, I know I haven't done that before, but I'm in touch with someone who's been giving me some really good advice. The other thing I love as a challenge, whenever I'm coaching someone who believes maybe their cultural background or their level of education or their knowledge or anything else is going to hold them back and it's that particular aspect that, that they worry about, I always issue a personal challenge which is find someone with your exact background who hasn't been able to be successful because people succeed against the odds with all kinds of diverse background all the time and that's another great way to get support to bolster your confidence, even when you're doing something new and radical from what will, insert the name here, think about this new change in direction that you want to take. And finally, the one that always breaks my heart, the big emotional roadblock to starting something new, accepting a new opportunity, taking that leap into the future that you've always wanted to take is, I'm not enough. This one always breaks my heart and I, I speak about it a lot when I, I talk about imposter syndrome and how to overcome that. But it's a similar it's a similar situation to what we'll like think in as much that no one ever feels completely enough. No one ever no one ever starts any new project with an absolute guarantee that it's going to turn out. An element of uncertainty is always there. But you'll never never know the internal resilience, the internal strengths, the hidden talents you have that might not be obvious right now if you just don't start. I also talk about when you've got that feeling of, of not being enough, it's really easy to go from step one to step 1000. So let's say you want to start a, um, a business in organic climate friendly packaging skincare and apart from really loving skincare and loving the climate and the environment and, and being really into natural products, you actually don't have a background. And you think about, you look at someone 
maybe has been incredibly accessible in this area and you look at their life and you look at their fantastic Instagram feed and everything else and you just feel so daunted. You think, I could never ever do what that person is doing. Why am I even starting? And this emotional roadblock is very, very real. But that person that you're looking at who is so successful, who has achieved so much, they didn't get there in one day. They probably didn't even get there in one year. And they didn't get there in 10 steps. They probably got there in a thousand steps. Now, I'm not saying this to put you off. I'm not saying this to say, well, it's a really long journey. But what's just one thing you could do today or tomorrow, or even this week, that would get you one step closer? There's a beautiful saying, um, Mount Everest was climbed one step at a time. And every new venture, every new business, it's exactly the same rule, just one step. It could be, as I mentioned in the, in the last emotional robot, it could be just sending one LinkedIn message saying, could you give me some advice on the best way to get started? It could be, if you're currently in retail, you could think, could I get a job in a company that's in a really similar, uh, has a really similar ethos? Perhaps I could look at the business I'm in, how could we become more climate friendly? And then what I learn, I could apply to my passion project when I get there. It all starts with just one step. We are all enough right now, even if you don't have superhuman confidence, which means you're actually super normal, <laughs> we can all take just one step. And just one step tomorrow, or the next week, or the next month, depending on how much time you have available. I read this scientific study once, and it was a couple of years ago when I was training for my first half marathon, um, and I've only done I don't run that often. So I was really interested in how I should train and I dived in deep and got the apps and what listened to podcasts and everything. But I came across this really obscure scientific study, which I now, of course, love and can't find again, where they talked about, they took two groups of runners and they suggested, there were two plans I could adopt. One was running, increasing your run by one minute a day. And when you got to a certain point, it was, you know, you didn't run every day, but it was managed. But the whole concept was first day you run for, run for one minute and then the next day you run for two minutes. And then the other plan was much more ramped up. I think you started with half an hour a day and it was just a lot more intense. And then it tapered off, whereas the other program is built. Now, I picked that you are better off doing program two, but no... Program number one of starting with just one minute, they actually, though the students who were in that part of the project, they not only, more of them actually got to the point where they completed a marathon, they even started, but they had a faster time. Even though they had the same length of training, they both had, I think it was three months on this program, they were more successful than the second group that started out way more intensively. So if you just have one minute, you can feel enough, feel confident to do one thing in one minute, one day or one week, that's how you get there. And that's how you overcome that last emotional roadblock that just stops you from getting started. So I'm so excited to be able to share this time with you. If after listening to this or watching this, there are other emotional roadblocks that you think don't really fall within these three pretty broad categories. Reach out, send me a DM. You can email me at my website. You, there's a number of ways you can get in touch and I would love to get back in touch with you and help you out on this one. But I'm so excited we were able to talk today about how to overcome the three emotional roadblocks that might be stopping you getting started. On another note, I have a limited number of spots available at the moment for one-on-one -on -one coaching. My one-on-one -on -one coaching takes a, a variety of different methods depending on where you are right now, but I usually start with a one-month intensive on overcoming your one big thing. And in the past, I've helped students overcome confidence in even speaking to anyone, confidence in trying something new, asking for funding, for their first round funding, 
all sorts of things. So there's lots of information also on my website, on my coaching program. But if you're interested in that as well, you can always book a 30 minute clarity call and we can talk about it further. Until next time, stay fabulous.